fucking epic up here right now. And that's the front facing camera. Don't have a ton of time, but I thought maybe I had enough time to come do a little show and tell grip tour. Plus, uh, coming up here without a pad is really not that bad after coming up here a bunch of times with pads and lights and all that shit. Look at this shit. Oh, unbelievable. And there she blows. A little bit of a walk for this one, but totally worth it. So right off the bat, I'll just say there are two ways to get to this boulder, uh, or more than two. If somebody tells you it took five minutes to get to this boulder, they went through private property. Don't do that, please. Um, really sick boulder, but not worth ruining access for everybody potentially just to come climb on it. Just walk around. It's not that far. So I did this boulder like two weeks ago, uh, which was nice because I've just been getting up to it one time a season. Um, I tried it fall last year, flashed it up to the knee bar move, and then I came back in spring with uh, this guy Anderson. Um, neither of us did it that day. My friend Forrest flashed it last year um, and actually didn't climb past that knee bar move from the start last year, but found a little bit of micro beta with Anderson that made it uh, seem a little bit better. Like I was having this issue where I was pinning my hand. Um, like on this hold right here, I was pinning my hand with my knee bar and I couldn't figure out how to like get my hand out from under the knee bar in order to make the next move. So we figured out a little bump move. I came into it this season with like a very execution attitude because I've just been super tired lately. I've been, I've had an infection and been taking antibiotics and stuff. So um, my energy level has just been pretty low, but you know, as you can tell from the, from the wide shots, it's uh it's the time of year to do it. So I really wanted to give it uh, a very, solid first burn so um i didn't record any of my warm-up or anything but i'll kind of try to walk backwards through what i did which is uh, i climbed most of the boulder in tiny pieces the very beginning of the boulder with the knee bars is like pretty chill for me i think it's probably like maybe a v5 boulder if you know how to knee bar well which is crazy because it shouldn't make the stand start really that much harder but it's just the time under tension and squeezing your core because it's kind of hard to see but like the crux of the boulder really climbs like a roof. It's like 60 degrees overhanging. Um, I think I measured it with my phone. It's actually 45, but it feels like it's like 60. Um, and it, it's, it's steeper than it seems, I guess I'll say. And so doing those extra moves at the beginning does add a little bit of like, you're out of breath and, and a little bit of like body pump. Um, and some of the holds are kind of bad. So you do squeeze pretty hard with your hands uh, as well. So I did each of the moves in succession. Um, I made sure that I understood where to do that bump to make space for my, my knee bar. And I did like a really thorough off the wall warm up. So I got my fingers super primed. I got my knee barring super primed by like, uh, standing on the ground with my thigh under a snag and like pushing up into the snag as hard as I could, um, to like warm up my calf and my ankle. Um, and I did that on both sides cause there's knee bars on both sides. I also did some lying hip extensions, uh, like pulling with the heel and also pulling with the toe to warm up my heel hooks. And also towards the end of my warm up, I ran the very top of the boulder, um, like linking from the end of what I consider the crux through to topping out and just kind of seeing how that felt. It felt really good.
mean, it's sick that you just like kept fucking going too. Yeah. I I did pop out that way one time before. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, it took the fucking load off, dude. <laughs> I was really stressed that I'd blow that bump boom and like, and then it would just feel like confidence plummeting, you know. This is one of those moments that's like important to do early in the session. Yeah. All right, so hold tour. Right hand, start hold. Really poor sloper pinch thing. Left hand, start hold. It's pretty decent, like, slopey left hand side pull. Um, and you get a little bit of compression between those two holds. I put my right foot down on this pad and my left foot on the higher of these two holds right here. Um, and then you pull on and you just immediately slam your knee back up behind your left hand here. Your left hand is down here and I put my knee up on this panel. Uh, and then you move your left hand up. So your left hand comes up to this one. There's actually quite a bit of hold here. Like this is also good down here. It's all decent. Uh, and then it's really hard to see your feet, but I keep the left knee bar, put in a right toe underneath my left toe, kind of do a knee scum with my right and step my left all the way up really high to this peg here. So once you have that peg with your left foot, uh, you can do like a really good knee bar behind your hand. That one's like a no hands. Um, and bring up your, your right foot at that point, uh, just comes up and flags, and you do this kind of cool pivot move. <clears throat> and from the pivot move, your right hand grabs this fucking epic pinch. So sick. Uh, and then keep the knee bar in and go up to a jug. Uh, and this is a bona fide jug. Actually, the sit start, so this is one contrivance with this problem. The sit start could totally just top out here, but it's easy terrain. It's still super dirty. Um, it doesn't really have a landing and it's not as cool, but you could definitely, you could definitely take away like half a star or whatever for that. So hit that jug. Right foot goes onto the right start hold. Um, I can chalk there for a second. And then right hand pops out to another super sick hold. Just like a little, this is like the kind of hold that Levy is best for, in my opinion. It's just like this loaf, sloper pinch. Masterful. So between that thing and this pinch right here, sick set of holds. Um, then you throw your heel up. I do a toe hook behind the, the loaf down here uh, with my right toe, put my heel up there. And then you come in left hand to this edge. It's not very good. Um, so you can take it really like, close to the front here where it's more slopey, but you can see there's kind of a division. So some people I think take it back here. I took it a little bit higher up, which is really only like good for three fingers, but that's where I liked it. And then from there, uh, your heel is still up. But I brought my, um, what did I do? I, I put my, my right toe hook behind the loaf down there, left toe up here, drop the right hand from kind of more aggressive on this to three finger just to move my pinky out of the way and make more space. And then hand foot match a heel onto this loaf and really make sure to like fold that heel out as much as possible. Oh, the sun came out. <laughs> there goes my contrast. Um, yeah, so once you get that uh, heel toe cam, then you do what I think is the first like really hard move. Um, first really hard move off that uh, hand foot match, you pull your body into the wall and your heel is really blocking you. Pull your body into the wall, hit the sloper. Some people just go straight to this hold, which is kind of like a decent scooped. I mean, it would be a jug if it was like down pulling, but uh, you're in such compression at this point. Um, it does have like a good spot back here and it, it bites. It really gets the skin. It's like quite sharp, but decent hold. Then you do this little foot walk on the rail. And at that point you start really squeezing quite hard with your upper body because it just gets so steep. Hand foot match on that left rail. Bump the left hand up to uh, the crimp, which you can't see. Get a shot of that crimp if I don't fall and die. Pretty sick hold also. It's more in-cut than it looks from here. Decent little hold. Get your left hand there. So this is where people's beta starts to differ. 
Uh, I had a lot of trouble with this part, but after you heel hook and go up to that left hand, you walk your feet back over again, and you're gonna get some kind of knee bar in this gap here. Sorry, it unfocuses. Um, you can also, after you do that, there's like a little bump hold you can see right there. Uh, and you can use that bump hold, it's really poor, but you can use it to adjust the knee if you need to. Go up to that kind of crescent thing, which can be crimped as like a down pull, or it can be kind of, you can catch it with a pinky and hold it like more of a Gaston shape. Um, it's like this knob right here. I kind of just held it as a crimp, like on the, um, the right upper side of it. And then you have one more hard move after that. So your last hard move after that, if you get that hold, is taking the knee bar out, which I totally fucked up on my red point go. Ah! Come on, dude. Fortunately, I knew that I might fuck it up on my red point go, so I was ready to take that foot rip, and my spotter knew I might rip. There's one more left hand, like, up around the corner here that you can't see. I don't think I can get a shot of it without falling. <laughs> um, but if you take the, if you can get your knee bar out and get a toe hook on the jug thing right there, get a toe hook there, if you can do the splits, you can put your heel up. If you can't do the splits, then you have to like put your heel up and um, it's just harder because your right foot has to come off. But I did two left hand bumps. So I, I brought my left hand up to the arete up there and then I brought my heel up one more and I went to this jug up here in the, in the L, the backwards L. Uh, and that thing's quite good. The top of the boulder is quite good. And then that block that's sticking out is uh, also a jug. And the, top, the actual top out is quite easy. It's just you wind up cutting your feet a couple times. So it's one of these like nest type landings. Um, like down here for the sit start. The sit start is kind of honestly hard to fall off of, but I just had a blubber down there. I didn't really feel like I needed a pad. The first place you need a pad is really on this snag here, this like knot. Um, because if you fall off of the move where you hand foot match on this hold, then you'll hit that with your back. So you definitely want to pad there. And then most of the rest of it is like a uh, tiered little like nest. You have these logs running across. Really nice uh, landing work because from below, you can't really tell it's here. It's very unassuming, um, but it's quite strong and safe to fall on. And it seems like it's gonna last for quite a while, which is nice. Yeah, kind of epic, uh, epic spray down. But I think this is the kind of boulder that you really want to do like either in a session or in a short number of tries. It's just like, you know, it's not so bad to get up here. If you're used to climbing somewhere like Tahoe, you're probably gonna find this hike pretty mellow. But um, for people who live around here, it's definitely constitutes a long approach, I would say. <laughs> yeah, so if uh, you're interested in doing flick the bean or canned beans, or uh, baked beans, I think it's called. Nice. Those are right there on that arcing arete that you can see. Tactically, I would say you need about, if you were really bold, you could probably do it with like two big pads or three small pads. Uh, I think I had two, what did I have? I had two big pads, two small pads, and a variety of like sliders and blubbers. Um, and I felt like pretty comfortable, but like I said earlier, I still needed to move one thing uh, to like move one pad while I was climbing. I think you definitely want a stick brush. Um, and I know people have climbed it alone. Personally, I wouldn't be super psyched on climbing it alone, uh, just because it's like pretty consequential and you're like up here by yourself. I mean, the worst thing would be to need to get rescued by the people who live down the hill whose property is getting trespassed on when uh, folks come to this boulder who don't know how to get to it. So yeah, that would suck. When it comes to approaches like this, I think there are basically like two attitudes you can take, you know, the first attitude, would be to think that it's a pain in the ass to walk further than a few minutes for climbing, which I guess I get. The problem with that attitude is it's not gonna serve you for very long because eventually you're gonna do all the stuff that you can do this five minutes from the road. And what are you gonna do then? <clears throat> um, you can't just trespass every time you wanna do a boulder that's hard to get to. Eventually you're just gonna have to sack up and like learn how to hike. That's just part of the game. So. Mark's against it. It is a little contrived. I think the start of the sit start, if you're into a sit start and you believe that just like starting sitting somewhere is a logical way to start a boulder problem, pretty, pretty legit uh, start. It's not like a fucking proper jug or anything like that, which is obviously better when you get those. Um, sequence, 
amazing. Hold set, pretty amazing. Um, definitely very, very Leavenworth um, hold set. Kind of like typical for the area, but a perfect example. Uh, contrivance, yeah, it's a little contrived. I mean, it is a little bit uh, silly that you don't climb straight up, but that what you do do, like once you commit to going right, it's not contrived anymore. So it's just that one point where it's kind of contrived. So in my, in my mind, that's not a huge mark against it. And what it has going for it is this, just epic. You absolutely cannot beat Icicle Canyon in the fall. It's just otherworldly.